going on and on about how I think werewolves are the best out of the small collection of occults that we have in The Sims 4, but I am all talk because I always say that and then I don't actually play with any of the occults, so really I, I don't deserve an opinion on this. But I do really think that werewolves are probably objectively the best of the group. The pack just has the best world, it's got the best stuff, and because it's the newest, they kind of just did a better job. And recently, I got shamed into doing a werewolf build by some of my Twitch mods. I'm serious, they like forced me to do this, and I think I'm glad because I don't normally build with werewolf stuff. So let's just dive right into the game, and I'll show you what I came up with for this one. So obviously the werewolf pack has kind of this like abandoned factory vibe, so I was kind of trying to channel that. For some reason, I decided to use diagonal walls in here. If you had only seen the full footage of this, what you're watching right now is take four. I bulldozed three times before we got to this point, but I kind of finally figured it out. This whole thing is obviously way out of my comfort zone. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm not really good at this kind of thing. I, I kind of have a certain build style that feels like it's mine, <laughs> and this werewolf stuff is really not it. I wanted it to look kind of abandoned, but maybe more like it was an abandoned building, but it's since been moved back into and kind of loved and cared for, maybe updated a little bit, but not like really updated, not like modernized, renovated, just loved and cared for is kind of what I was going for. And one of my friends is actually playing with a couple of werewolves right now in their save, so I was like, you know what? What do you need? <laughs> I'll make it for them. What are your sims like? So there's two sims living here. There are a couple. Both of them are werewolves. One of them is a bookworm, so they wanted to have an office space for that sim, and the other one has the active trait, so we wanted to add in a home gym somewhere. They wanted a main bedroom, but also a guest bedroom. No kids rooms or anything like that. And probably most importantly, they wanted a werewolf panic room. So if any of you play with werewolves ever, you'll know that when they rampage, they are extremely destructive. They will ruin everything in your house. So a lot of people that play with werewolves, they like to build a room with nothing in it to lock the wolf in when they are rampaging. And you don't need to put anything in there because they can't click on anything. You can't do anything. When they're rampaging, literally all they can do is destroy. And so a lot of people do this where they just put them in the basement somewhere. So I did make sure to include one of those in our basement of this house. We had no budget for this one because they weren't too worried about using money cheats to buy it, and they specifically asked for greens, yellows, and browns as the color scheme, which I was really thrown off by. I've never really used that as a vibe before in a house, so it was kind of a fun challenge to do that. Honestly, if you've got any friends who play The Sims, if you're kind of in a building slump, ask if they need a house or something, or just like ask Ask them to tell you what their current Sims family is like and try and build something for them because it's nice to step away from what you've been doing and like think about what somebody else wants <laughs> just to give you some new ideas sometimes because like I was saying earlier, I never would have built this on my own. It was kind of fun to like imagine the other people's Sims and what they would want and what they would need and clearly we ended up using some kind of interesting stuff. There's some items here that I've literally never used before. The yellow swatch on these werewolf windows, I have never used. Not a single time. I don't even know if I realized that yellow swatch even existed, so I'm glad that I got a chance to try it out over here. And then you can see with the landscaping, I was trying really hard to use a lot of the debug landscaping from werewolves. There's a ton of trees that kind of blend in in this area. I wanted it to look a little bit overgrown, but like still kind of well kept. Like overgrown, but someone does still live here, you know? <laughs> That's such a weird way of describing it, but I didn't want to put like trash outside. Obviously the werewolves pack has a lot of trash that you can use for the exterior, like debug trash items. I didn't want it to be trashed. I, I think maybe it was trash, but they cleaned it up before they moved in. That's kind of what I was picturing. There's also a barbed wire fence in werewolves that I totally did not realize was there. I don't think I've ever used that. Whenever I want a metal fence, I use the one that comes with get to work. I don't even think I realized this pack even had one. The only kind of weird debug thing I used were these like werewolf warning signs. I think they're supposed to be out in front of Grey.
Greg's house, like that scary werewolf. Everybody says beware of Greg. I think those are the beware of Greg signs, but I put them here because it was kind of cute. <laughs> so we're not Greg, we're not evil, but it was still kind of a fun little wolf sign. So I used it in the front yard. And that's pretty much the basic shape of the exterior figured out. You can kind of see that it has slight factory vibes, but like you can also tell that it's a house. And that's really what I wanted out of this. I've got a bunch of chimneys. I ended up mixing and matching some yellow paneling in there. And I gotta say, it is really nice watching this back sped up. Cause like I said, this is the third or fourth try. It took me multiple bulldozes. So by this point, it was like, I knew what I was doing. Cause I already built it a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> I kept building almost this and being like, no, it's horrible <laughs> and then deleting it. So with this time, it like all came together quite nicely. It looks like it was painless. It wasn't, but there's no video evidence of that. Unless you go to my Twitch channel and watch the live stream. <laughs> if you go back and watch like the video of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. Don't do that. It's fine. I'm actually kind of in my occult era right now. I just built this werewolf house and recently, also on my Twitch streams, I married a spellcaster in my legacy challenge over there. I don't know. I think this kind of stuff is fun. It's just not my like everyday favorite part of The Sims 4, you know? It's not that I hate occults. It's just not really my like my thing, I guess. There's been a whole lot of talk about fairies recently for The Sims 4. We just got a trailer for a new stuff pack the other day and I saw a lot of people really upset that that stuff pack wasn't fairies because people have been really pushing the idea of fairies and like begging and begging and begging for it. So I think from now on every pack that comes out there's gonna be a lot of like it's not fairy so it sucks kind of reaction. Personally I'm really glad that the stuff pack isn't fairies. I would be really upset if the fairy pack came in a stuff pack because they wouldn't be as good. If we do get fairies I'd want it to be a full game pack like werewolves and vampires are. But I'm just pointing this out because I kind of want to like regroup as a community. What are we thinking about the fairy concept right now? Are you into it? Are you hating it? Like how, how are you feeling? What do you think the fairy pack would be. I'm kind of struggling to envision gameplay for fairies that would be different from the gameplay that we already have from like other magic powers and things like that in The Sims 4. Not that like it wouldn't be possible. I just, I can't really envision what it would come with aside from like, you know, a fairy with wings. <laughs> I'm trying to picture what kind of things they could do that feels different and special enough compared to Realm of Magic, but who knows? There isn't actually a fairy pack. It's all just speculation from the community. People are like really, really wanting it though. So I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they did make something like this. I just want you to keep in mind that the production cycle for The Sims 4 is really long. They work on these things like so far in advance. So the community is talking about this a ton right now, but if they started making it in the past few months, kind of in response to that, it won't come out for like a year or year and a half, whatever, who knows? We don't even know if they actually are making one. So just, I, I'm pointing that out to like help manage expectations, right? I don't want you to think there's like some sort of news. There's no news. <laughs> We're just discussing possibilities. It feels appropriate given this type of build, right? And also like with the new jewelry making and the magic from that, I feel like that pack kind of ties in quite nicely with the other occult packs, like a spellcaster who makes magic jewelry makes perfect sense. I could see a fairy making magic jewelry too, to be honest, but <laughs> I guess we'll see what happens if we do end up getting a pack like that. We finally kind of figured out the exterior and done a bunch of layout stuff with the landscaping. So we're moving on to the inside and trying to figure out the spacing here. And this floor plan was really hard for me. It's kind of a weird shape and the upstairs isn't actually that big. I also wanted to have a lofted space really badly. So that kind of takes out a lot of our room. So when you're looking at the house, the whole big wide side where the diagonal wall is, that becomes one big giant living kitchen dining room. Then we also have have an office space and kind of like a hallway downstairs. Upstairs there's a lofted bedroom and a bathroom and then in the basement we're gonna have a gym and the guest room which kind of becomes like a combo games room. I'll explain more when we get there. The weird part of the floor plan mostly comes into the area next to the front door, kind of like the two-story space in the loft. It was so skinny that I felt like I couldn't really furnish anything in there and I, I wanted it to not be a waste of space so I was struggling a lot with that area, just like the little hallway next to the door. Feels kind of silly to be complaining about that, but literally I spent so long trying to figure it out. I was going back and forth so much with that. It's, 
embarrassing to think about now, but it was difficult at the time. This is gonna sound really weird too, but next to the front door, there's a bathroom downstairs. And I hated how the front door and the bathroom door were on the same wall and there was no separation. I think it just comes from the fact that the bathroom door looks so different than the real door looks. And so them next to each other, just it didn't really fit well. So I was trying really hard to think of some sort of separation, like some kind of furniture I could put to block it or like do something to make it look different. <laughs> If only you saw me do this live, I was being so annoying. I just, I didn't know what I wanted it to be like, so I was really struggling. <laughs> it always takes me a minute to figure that kind of stuff out, and there's a lot of back and forth. Now, in the kitchen, I managed to incorporate some kind of fun features. I put a bar in there. I don't often have bars inside of my Sims houses. I realized that recently, the only bars I've been putting in my Sims builds, which I have been using a lot, but I've been only putting them on the patio. I've been doing a lot of outdoor kitchens ever since we got the Home Chef Hustle Pack and that pizza oven. So for the last like six months, I've been putting a ton of outdoor kitchens, like nice built-in grill and bar areas with counters and stuff. And that's been a great space to put the bars, but I haven't been putting them inside. I just, I don't think about it. I don't add them in anywhere. The mixology skill is definitely not one of my more used skills in this game. It's just not one that ever comes to mind for me, but I thought it'd be kind of fun for this household because like they're young, they probably have a lot of parties. They can invite like their werewolf pack members over and they can use the bar. Right next to the kitchen, I put a little dining room and I used these really cool bookshelves from the werewolves pack, almost like dividers. They're big and tall, but they're see-through. So it looks like a divider. And I kind of liked how it helped split up the space a little bit. I always hate having to use the same bookshelf twice because you can tell that it's the same bookshelf because they've got all this clutter on them. And then it's just like replicated right next to each other. So to help manage that, I flipped one of the bookshelves around. So it's backwards which kind of helps make it look a little different. And then I also went in and tried to add a bunch of different clutter on each side and like raise up clutter to cover the existing stuff. Like for example, on those shelves, there's a fake picture frame. So I tried to like raise a box up on top of the picture frame on one of them so you wouldn't see the same picture on both sides because it's just kind of weird to have it mirroring each other. We're at a point in this build where I was struggling a lot with the style because I wanted it to be kind of eclectic. I wanted it to be kind of old, like maybe with salvaged furniture almost, but I also wanted it to still look good and, and like a rich family lived here. <laughs> I was trying to like make rich werewolves almost. I ended up using a lot of packs in this build. I found a lot of things like the industrial loft kit that really matched this because it has that sort of industrial renovated factory vibe. I used a lot of rugs from laundry day because the colors kind of worked. We've got this like layered rug thing going on in the living room, which I felt like kind of made sense. And then I got a huge TV. <laughs> which is so funny compared to like the destroyed floor that we have. We've got this massive 8,500 simoleon flat screen on the wall. I've been using that in so many places recently. It's ridiculously expensive, but it's my favorite TV because it's the biggest one. I like it size down one though. It's a little bit bigger than the regular flat screens, but like when they size up with the cheaper ones, it gets too big. So this is a good in-between. It's also really helpful for gameplay because it has like level 10 fun or something. So you can basically instantly fix your Sims fun need. It takes like two seconds. And I'm the kind of person to force my Sims to grind skills. Like I'll sit here and make you program all day. <laughs> or if I'm trying to max the cooking skill, we are just cooking over and over and over and over again. And my Sims are often in bad moods because of it. So having TVs like this is helpful because it's like an instant fix. I was feeling really lost with this build up until this point. Like once we figured out the living room, I felt like everything else kind of fell into place. That happens to me a lot where I'm like sitting here kind of jumping around between rooms feeling like I have no idea what I'm trying to do. And then as soon as I get one thing sort of sorted, it's like, oh, okay, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and then I've got the vision that I need to finish the rest of it. And unsurprisingly, the rug swatch was probably the hardest part of this. The color scheme was difficult because I was trying to get that yellow and green thing, but also have a lot of brown. So there's a ton of brown brick and brown paneling everywhere, but I've got like a couple green accent walls. I was trying to have rugs that had a little bit of hint of green in them. There ends up being a lot of red accents in this house too, which I wasn't really expecting, but I kind of liked. And then probably the weirdest part of this room, and I'm so sorry if you hate it. <laughs> From the Blooming Rooms kit, 
it, there's this like leaf curtain and I never use it. I get urged to use it by my Twitch chat all the time. It seems like chat really likes the leaf curtains, but I never ever ever use them. I think I've only ever used it when I made a fake fairy house. I was doing like a pretend fairy house and I was like, fine, I'll use it here. But most times I just feel like it's a little bit much for like an average build. But in this house, one of the Sims is very planty. It was specifically called out by my friend that they wanted their Sims to have a lot of plants in the house. It was like green, yellow, brown, plants <laughs> was the request that they made for the color scheme. So I was like, you know what? This might be the best opportunity to use that weird plant curtain. So I did it here. We've got a lot of fairy lights in this house too. And then I tried to use a lot of the book note kit posters because I picture those posters as being like book covers. And because one of the Sims is a bookworm, I was like, that's perfect. It makes perfect sense. But that's kind of the main vibes figured out for the living space. After I got to this point, again, it was kind of smooth sailing. I felt like I had an idea of what to do. <laughs> We're just going in now and putting in some of those clutter details on the bookshelf that I was talking about. There's a lot of items that I kind of forgot we had. There's this little family of owls from Growing Together, which is one of my favorite things. And I haven't used it in ages. I felt like I used it all the time when the pack first came out, but now it's been like a year and I haven't used it in a while. So I put that. There's these little dog statues from Cats and Dogs and like it's a wolf house. <laughs> so I used the dog statues too, because of course I did. You know what? I'm sorry to go back to the fairy thing again, but that that's one thing that the hypothetical fairy pack is gonna thrive with. Like imagine the clutter from a fairy themed pack. It, it would be perfect. It'd probably be so cute. Collectively as a group, the Sims community is manifesting this hard. <laughs> It's like everywhere. It's all anybody's talking about right now. So I'm sorry to keep bringing it up. I really don't want to like get your hopes up. <laughs> it's just really been on my mind recently, okay? While I'm decorating this, I like to use these speed builds almost like little uh, podcasty life updates from time to time. So <laughs> here's what I've been up to this week. First, I had COVID last week, which probably alarmed a lot of you. <laughs> I'm fine now. I'm feeling a lot better testing negative. It was a rough week for me. Probably the worst of it was like Wednesday, Thursday of last last week. So at the time, you're seeing this, it's been ages. I'm feeling like totally fine now. I kept recording because I didn't want to miss uploads and stuff. <laughs> um, and thankfully, I usually have like a few days ahead on videos. So the worst of the days, I, I didn't have to record or anything. So that was a relief. But if you were worried, I'm all good. <laughs> we're better now. We're feeling a lot better. And this morning, oh my God. Okay, so I was laying in bed this morning, right? And one of the weirdest things about my kittens is that they are not good at, or at least they're not smart about jumping on the bed. I've got three cats. The older cat, she's smart. She's logical. She jumps on the bed from the foot of the bed. She'll like go onto the stool. We have like a bench at the end of the bed. She'll jump there and then onto the bed. The kittens jump straight next to your head. They'll land like right here. <laughs> it's a dangerous game. Like we're cutting it real close to probably getting landed on at some point soon. And they're like flying. Every time they jump, they fly across the bed. Well, I'm telling you this because today shrimp did this and in the process, he had just gotten on the bed. He landed like right here next to my head. And then my other kitten, Sunny, his sister, she like popped her head out from behind the curtain, scared him, and then he flew off of me. Oh, I flung my headphone cord. <laughs> he like flew off of me in fear because she like startled him from behind the curtain. And in the process, he scraped across my chest. <laughs> it hurt so bad. My cats don't scratch me. Like I don't really ever get cat scratches unless it's, you know, an accident like that. So it's been a while since I've been scratched by one of them and I've got a giant scratch across my chest from it. It's more like, it's like here and here on like the two sides, but it's because he flew off of me as soon as Sunny startled him. She is a weird one too. She goes behind the curtain when they're closed in the morning because she likes to look out the window. So she'll sit on the windowsill behind the curtain and she'll like chirp outside at like birds she sees or like people walking by. <laughs> She chirps at them. But anyway, that's my life update. <laughs> I'm feeling better. Everything's fine. And at this point, we're moving on to work on the office space in the house. So you can see we've kind of figured out the floor plan a bit better. We've got this huge archway coming into the office and there's a nice desk in the middle. We've got bookshelves behind it. I did the trick again where I tried to make it look like the shelf wasn't the same thing copy pasted. And then in front of the bookshelf, in the weird hallway with the stairs, I ended up putting a games table. I put like a little puzzle table there. I thought it 
filled the space nicely and it was like central to the room so you could still get around it easily but then you also have a thing to do with your sims you can play games there you can play puzzles whatever and then when you go straight upstairs this is the only actual bedroom in the house it's kind of like a lofted bedroom on this second floor so we've got a cool canopy bed from the industrial loft kit which amazingly comes in yellow so it fit the style really well we have like the yellow windows and the yellow bed and then I put a little dresser space kind of next to it there is an ensuite bathroom up here so you've got access to the bathroom in total this house has two bathrooms there's one upstairs and one downstairs and probably the best part of this primary bedroom area is the balcony that's off the the deck I really liked doing it you can access the balcony from up here or from outside there's a staircase on both sides we'll furnish that at the end but I ended up putting some yoga mats out there <laughs> so they could do yoga together which I had fun with playing with this and like envisioning how a person would play in the werewolf house was making me feel really inspired to do a werewolf thing <laughs> I haven't played as a werewolf in a bit so let me know if we should do like a werewolf video on YouTube we could do a little like werewolf playthrough or something just for fun most recently it's just been like werewolf rags to riches stuff which is fun but like not the normal way a person would play with the pack so <laughs> it might be interesting to just play to just play for fun that's the kind of thing that's always fun to do over on my Twitch channel I'm sorry to sit here and like keep plugging my Twitch channel but <laughs> I stream every day over on Twitch my name is just Lil Simsy on there we play a ton of the Sims I built this obviously live took me a couple days but <laughs> we built this on stream I've got some let's plays that I'm doing over there I've been playing the 100 baby challenge recently and I just had my 62nd baby so we're almost there <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there I started doing that back in May and I'm still doing it I really would like to finish it by next May which we're running out of time for it just gets so boring that challenge like once you have a lot of money it, it becomes so easy and so repetitive you get into like a system of how to take care of the kids and then it's just not really fun anymore so I'm in a bit of a baby challenge slump recently but it's okay we'll power through while we're working on this room with some last minute details I wanted to point out that I used the duct work from the industrial loft kit upstairs kind of above the open loft area and I really liked it there for a couple of reasons the probably the most important is that it doesn't affect anything <laughs> like it's still functional gameplay wise I really like that duct work but when you put it on short wall height or when you put it anywhere that a sim has to use things so like maybe over a bed over a table sometimes it can affect their pathing and their routing and so it's a little bit annoying to have it like in a regular build but in this case nobody's actually stepping in that second story because it's fake it's open and so it doesn't affect anything it's totally functional and it's nice too because it kind of puts something there in that big vast open space and makes it feel like it has a purpose but anyway we're moving on now into the basement and the basement I think was probably the most difficult part of this whole build which is just such a weird thing to say because it's such a simple room but I had a long Long list of things that I wanted to have so first of all we need the panic room which you can kind of see here I've put like a little room with a scary metal door <laughs> that's for the wolf to be locked in when they're rampaging then they wanted to have some sort of gym area down here I wanted it to seem like a nice multi-purpose functional gym so I put a ton of gym equipment the only thing that we're missing is a treadmill I used the werewolves punching bag and the werewolves weight machine but there wasn't a treadmill that matched the treadmills are very modern and like too fancy it just it didn't really fit with the vibes of the building and you might be noticing that huge sliding door to the right of the room that's what I had become the guest room and I felt like the idea of a guest room is kind of a tough one because my friend wanted this for stay over guests specifically which honestly I found doesn't even work <laughs> when you've got a stay over guest they don't even use the extra bed but I still wanted to put one in there because they did ask for it but I didn't want it to be only a guest room I felt like having it be only a guest room was kind of a waste of space I wanted it to be like a more multi-purpose multi-functional room so what I did was use a Murphy bed and then I put in like a TV kind of like a media console so it almost becomes a games room we do have a foosball table there and I think the best part of this is the Murphy bed still opens with the foosball table there I don't think it would have been a bad thing if it didn't open with the table there because I feel like in real life if you've got like maybe a pull-out sofa for guests you might have to move the coffee table to pull the sofa out or like in 
this case, same thing. You might have like a coffee table or a games table or something in this room. So in real life, you just like scoot it to make room for the bed when you're needing the bed to be in use. But all of that to say, the bed still comes down with the foosball table there. And I think the foosball is the most fun part of this because I never use that anymore. Back when it first came out, that's from Get Together. So like ages and ages and ages ago, 2015 it came out. I used to use it all the time because we didn't really have anything else like that. But now I guess we have things like the ping pong table and there's, I don't know, a couple other games. And I just, it's kind of lost its sparkle, I guess. So I don't really think about it too often anymore. I still to this day want a proper pool table. We've been talking about that since we got the foosball. We've all been like, wow, wouldn't it be fun to have a pool table? And we've never gotten one. It's been like 10 years, still no pool table in The Sims 4. I love the idea of a pool table in this specific basement, but it's fine. It doesn't matter. We're working lastly here on the little werewolf room. So this is where you're gonna lock The Sims in case of rampage. I did add a couple bits of decorations that they couldn't destroy. I put like a food bowl. There's a, a newspaper with like a pea stain on it. And there's like some toys in the corner. They can't actually touch those, but I felt like it was kind of a funny touch. And then there's also a bunch of scratches on the wall. I think I have a scratched picture of Vlad. There's just cracks in the wall where they kind of destroyed it. And that's pretty much all that's going on down there. It's not meant to have furniture. I was getting a lot of suggestions in my Twitch chat to like, oh, add in this thing for them to do while they're rampaging. But you gotta remember, they can't do anything while rampaging. They literally just break things. You can't even click on stuff while they're rampaging. So putting in a chair in there, all it's gonna do is get it scratched. <laughs> putting in like a cot, I got some suggestions to add in like a bed for them. All they're gonna do is break it. They won't sleep, they'll just break it. And most wolves, if they want to, you can buy that perk to sleep on the floor and to pee on the floor. So really, they don't need anything. <laughs> They can just use the big empty room and it's short-lived, it's temporary. But now, last but not least, we are moving on to start adding in some more details into the outside. There was a couple of priorities out here. We wanted to have a fire pit, just kind of for fun. We wanted a pea bush, just in case. I did end up having a pool out here, which was kind of a fun detail. I put the pool and then I put in some like gross mossy water. <laughs> I don't know if it looks good or not, but it's kind of fun. It gives me the ick just like a little bit, but I felt like it was appropriate for this. I did at one point, you might have seen earlier, I did at one point consider leaving an empty pool. Like I was gonna have an open basement and have it look like it had been drained, but I decided it looked kind of strange and having a real pool is more effective anyway. But they've got like pretty much any skill item you can imagine out here. There's grills, there's the pool, we've got a telescope, they've got yoga mats. <laughs> I tried to really embrace the exterior and I also really tried to fill in the exterior with plants. I wanted it to feel very green out here and just very beautiful. Oh, there's a dumpster too. Sorry, I almost forgot. That's important. <laughs> there's multiple woohoo spots in this house. A dumpster is the best one, but you've got options. And if you're trying to figure out where we are right now, this is on a lot called Prowler's Patch. This is the lot that's empty by default in Moonwood Mill. So in that world, there's one big 30 by 30 lot that just comes empty. It's like across the street from the library. That's where we built this one. So you don't have to bulldoze anything to place this. Unfortunately, it's probably not the most placeable thing because it uses so many packs. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I built this for a friend and my friend has all the packs. So they were like, just go wild. And because it was for them, not me, I, I really went wild. <laughs> I just kind of used anything anywhere in here. But I've been trying to do quite a few limited pack builds for YouTube recently. I've got one coming up pretty soon that turned out really nicely. I did a little challenge on my stream where I used a randomizer to decide three packs to combine. And it was kind of fun because it made me try out packs that I don't normally do together. I spun eco lifestyle, movie hangout, and wedding stories, which are not three that you would usually pair together. Their styles don't really like immediately seem like they would match, but it was kind of a fun concept. So let me know if I should post that video here on YouTube. And if, if you want to, we could do it again and see what packs we get next time. Cause it was really interesting, I thought, to try and combine these two that like almost clashed. Like eco lifestyle and movie hangout have such different vibes. So trying to fit them together was really fun fun. But yeah, in this case, in this build though, all of them, pretty much every pack, obviously mostly werewolves, but I used a lot more kits than I thought I was going to. For example, we've got an outdoor kitchen. Like I was telling you, we have the pizza oven from the Home Chef Hustle pack. I've got the Desert Lux kit grill out here. There's fairy lights from toddler stuff. We don't even have a, a kid, <laughs> but we got toddler stuff. And I just noticed I deleted the outdoor kitchen. So I said all that, and I ended up replacing it with just a, with just a grill from 4Rent. So never mind. 
I told you a lie. <laughs> there is none of that. I changed my mind about it, apparently. But we're pretty much done with the build now. We're just going through and doing some last minute touches, some terrain paint, stuff like that. What I want to do now is pop back into the game and give you a live tour of the full finished build. It's always kind of hard to see with this stuff because it goes so fast and it speeds up and you can't always tell like what I'm talking about. So <laughs> I want to pop back in and show you everything just still so it's easier to see. Like I was saying, I built this in Moonwood Mill. It's over here on this 30 by 30 lot. There's only five lots here, so hopefully it's not too hard for you to find. Ignore the fact that I've got a, an alien living here. Just, it, she's a test sim right now. I made her because I was gonna do an alien house like two weeks ago and I still haven't done it, but I keep using her as my test sim <laughs> and there's still no alien house, but I will someday, stay tuned. Okay, so this is the finished build. There's a couple things that I had a lot of fun with. For example, this part, this thing is floating. That's super weird, but I kind of liked it for this. We've got our mailbox in the front. We've got our beware signs. I use this like mulchy texture to try and emulate the default one, but it's not quite the same color. There's a ton of plants everywhere on the outside. I have some graffiti in a few places. I think the backyard is my favorite. We do have some planter boxes because one of the Sims is a gardener. We've got a table, more planter boxes, a grill. We have the pool. I've got these yellow lounge chairs, which I never ever ever use. When you come up this outside staircase, you can access that balcony outside of their bedroom. We have a telescope and those two yoga mats I told you about. One of them has the moon phases on it, which I felt like was really appropriate. Out here in the back, we do have a dumpster and this really nice bush so you can woohoo in it. There's kind of like a clearing out here, which maybe would make for a good spot if you're gonna play here for like a swing set or any kind of extra skill items you wanted. Oh, <laughs> I zoomed further, there's a giant tree. Okay, not as much of a clearing as I thought, but you get it, you know what I mean. Anyway, when you first come inside, you walk in through this little front door into this small entryway space. Here's kind of a top-down view of the whole house. So from this entryway, you can go left. This takes you into the hallway where the staircase is. There's like a stacked staircase for the basement and the second floor. This is the games table I was telling you about. You can access the office, which this little kid is apparently playing on the computer right now. <laughs> I love how these bookshelves turned out. I had a lot of fun trying to decorate them. Also in this hallway, we have that downstairs bathroom. Look at this shower. This is from the rent pack. I know it's maybe a little bit fancy for this place, but I, I couldn't pass up the green and the gold. This is one of my favorite showers in the entire game. I always forget about the swatches, but it's so good. I just think that's so pretty. But coming back this way into the entryway again, we've got in the middle space, just kind of a small entry table. You can put your keys here. If you walk through this dual bookshelf, you access the kitchen and the dining room. We have a huge dining table with some pretty lights next to it. I tried to add in pipes and like other various industrial looking decor. I love how big the kitchen is. There's plenty of space to cook in here and you have the bar as well. I also put radiators everywhere because they have this kind of like destroyed version and I just thought that was kind of cool. So I put them in. Over here in the living room, we've got a super cute big table with a TV. I put like some wolf clutter. There's spaces for family photos on the wall. Plenty of space to sit in here, play some games, read a wolf book. Oh, sorry. Where Living Magazine, not a book. <laughs> this thing is actually for music. Uh, you can turn on the radio with this. I was kind of trying to make this place good for parties because we've got like the bar everywhere and stuff. So I was thinking about music and games tables, those things that are requirements for parties. Um, when you come up the staircase over this way, you can access the outside or come upstairs. This is that cool lofted space I was telling you about. I love how this part looks with like the big decal and the fairy lights. When you first walk upstairs, we got like a little dresser space and a shelf with some clutter on it. I put the Grim Reaper snow globe. <laughs> you can access their primary bathroom from here and it's pretty big. We've got two sinks, a shower, a tub, and a toilet up here. So fully functional, all the things you could possibly need. I really liked the clutter and the color scheme with this rug. Also this mirror with the crystals and the moon. This is the kind of thing that I expect to see from the new pack with the crystals. I feel like it's gonna fit in so well with that stuff but we've got a really pretty mirror on that wall. You can access their balcony from up here. And then when you come back all the way downstairs, this is the basement we were talking about. First, we have kind of like a warning light before you go into the werewolf room. I've got a security camera and <laughs> some little details. They can't destroy anything in here, thankfully. They did destroy this mirror and parts of the wall, but we've got some more clutter. I love this pipe thing. I used it a few times. I put a ceiling fan in here so you can use that to keep you cool while you're working out. They've got this like fighting item, which my Sim can't use because they're a child, <laughs> but you can practice sparring on this 
this. We've got the punching bag and also the weights. And then this is that guest room space that I was telling you about. And I can show you how it works when you put this bed down. With my luck, she's gonna like die. <laughs> while trying to do it, but when you put the bed down, it totally fits still. It did have like a tiny visual clipping with the foosball table, but it's no big deal. And then they can use this as a guest bed. I really, really liked this room. So you can lay there, you can watch TV, you can play games. And that, my friends, is the fully finished werewolf house. I know that was a lot. It was a long video, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know if I should do any more occult related building because I'm kind of curious to do some spellcaster builds now, especially since we're getting the crystal pack. So just tell me, did you like this one? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And with that, I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. Oh, and the alien house. I owe you an alien house. I will do that one too. I swear.